Thank you. Uh, may I request Dr. Pankaj Suranget, sir, to please start the next session. Uh, though it's a session for pain, but I think they will make it more pleasurable. A uh, session on the chronic pain and uh, uh, I'm not sure uh, most like most of us here sitting here are the researchologists. Uh, I think they are aware that uh, pain medicine uh, has become a new super specialty now. Are you aware of that? Anyone sitting here? Yeah, so pain medicine has become a super specialty now because now uh, we have DM in pain medicine in uh, ordinary for medical sciences, Rishikesh. And also recently, uh, the National Board of Examination, they have started a FNB program. That is post-MD, two years of FNB program. Uh, that, is, uh, that goes through the need uh, super specialty course. So with that introduction, now this is a, a new super specialty and I'm sure that uh, uh, sociologists uh, will have uh, another uh, branch available for them, a viable branch, a really vi viable branch uh, to look up, uh, to look forward. Uh, so with that, uh, I'll uh, introduce my first speaker, Dr. Sumit Khatri. He's a, a pain physician and uh, in Arihant Hospital, Indore. And his topic uh, of presentation is uh, regenerative therapies in chronic pain management. So regenerative is again a very good uh, um, alternative for the uh, in a, a chronic pain management, uh, especially for the regenerative for the degenerative conditions and also for the sports injuries, inflammatory condition and sports injuries. So, Sumit Khatri, please start your presentation, please. Thank you, sir, for inviting me, and very good afternoon to everyone. So, uh, my topic is the role of regenerative therapy in chronic pain management. As we all know that uh, the current available options in pain management are mainly focused on uh, suppression of pain like NSAIDs, opioid, steroid, RF ablation. Actually, they are not addressing the actual pathophysiology of the pain and they are not treating the actual pathophysiology of the pain. But in regenerative therapy, we are focused to treat the uh, tissue damage and repair it. and. Uh, regenerate it for the pain management in uh, uh, using regenerative cells and growth factors which stimulates and accelerates your body's natural ability to repair rebuild regenerate its soft tissues focused on the development and application of new treatment to heal and or restore function to tissues or organ damaged by the disease trauma age and degeneration what was called a crazy science just few years ago is now treatment that is utilized by many board certified pain management physician as an alternative to steroid based therapies. So what are the conditions where our regenerative therapy uh, helps like uh, first is degenerative arthritis all peripheral joint including the hip knee fingers and uh, degenerative spinal diseases like spondylosis, spondylolisthesis, degenerative disc diseases, any kind of joint stability where there is a ligament tear, injury, labral tear, degeneration, meniscus tear, degeneration, joint hypermobility syndrome, and Ehlers Danlos syndrome. And various tendinopathies like uh, include tendinosis, tendinitis, grade one, and two tears, partial tears. Anthesopathies include osteitis pubis and medial tibial stress syndrome, very common in athletes, muscle origin pain and tears. And other musculoskeletal conditions like post-surgical pain syndrome, myofascial pain syndrome, fibromyalgia, complex regional pain syndrome, chronic headache and radiculopathy. So what are the options available in regenerative therapies? These are uh, hackett hemwell prolotherapy, which is a dextrose therapy, platelet-rich plasma therapy, prolo-ozone, and others like vitamin D cream, phenol, low, low concentration phenol injections, glycerin, stem cell, needling. Actually, this uh, prolotherapy uh, part is uh, 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 requires a very less investment and uh, it, it can be done bedside uh, in clinic-based settings. So it is very easy to uh, use and it is a very good options uh, 
uh, as an alternative therapy as well. And stem cell is a big uh, topic, so it needs a separate lecture for it. So I am not covering that part here. So what is prolotherapy? Defined in Webster's third new international dictionary is the rehabilitation of incompetent structures such as ligament or tendon by induced proliferation of new cells. So actually it is the balance between the growth factor and disrepair factor. The more are the growth factors, the higher the chances of uh, uh, successful therapy and if disrepair factors are dominant, we may need a frequent uh, uh, cycles for uh, uh, prolotherapy injections and failure chances are high. A growth factor is a complex protein that change the function of DNA often by change in its shape, altering genetic expression in favorable way for its repair. Whereas disrepair factors are certain types of interleukins and metalloproteinases can render growth factor ineffectual. So before going to dextrose prolotherapy, uh, uh, researchers have found uh, uh, th that there is a proliferation of uh, cells inside the body in a diabetic patients. That's how they came to know that uh, dextrose is a, can be used as a proliferating agent for a regenerative therapy. Uh, various diabetic researches found the known effect of dextrose elevation on proliferation of vessels in the eye which causes retinopathy, mesangial cells in kidney and endothelial cells in major vessels. So literature found that many growth factors are produced when cells exposed to elevated glucose level. Murphy et al. found that elevation of glucose from 0.1% to 0.4% that is level found in diabetics results in production of as many as 15 different proteins including key growth factor for soft tissues that is connective tissue growth factor and transforming growth factor B. So the various types of uh, prolotherapy uh, it depends depending on the site of injection. Uh, intraarticular prolotherapy, myofacial prolotherapy and neurofacial prolotherapy. Neurofacial is very important. Uh, in intraarticular prolotherapy it is a classic method. Uh, the injection location here is on the bony cortex or into the joint and we are expecting the healing of anthesis of ligament or tendon or improvement in joint health or tightening of loose structures. Regional injection infiltrate the broad and territories of many nerve fiber that may be dysfunctional in chronic pain. So uh, thus a neurogenic mechanism is ev evidenced by the rapid instantaneous improvement that many patient experiences. This is far too rapid to be explained by structural repair in degenerated tissues. So structure, structural repair will take some time but these patients will not notice uh, pain analgesia pain free period uh, as very early as compared to structural repair. And myofacial prolotherapy, it is the injection of specialized soft tissue of the bony cortex outside of the joint and below the subcutaneous fascia. And target includes musculotendinous degeneration, subs, intrasubstance tendon or muscle tear, facial defects that prevent muscle function or other facial areas invested with neo vessels or neo nerves. And in neurofacial prolotherapy, injection in the vicinity of peripheral sensory nerves and specially their point of facial penetration where they reach a sub subcutaneous plane. So what is the rationale for uh, sensory nerve vulnerability at facial penetration sites? Uh, the nerves are affected in two ma major ways. First is the constriction after the injury in the nerve. If nerve is traumatized, small amount of swelling occurs that travel both the directions that leads to strangulation type effect in the area of constriction as the nerve penetrates facial hole or lacuna. And the classic clinical example is a Morton's neuroma. There is a, a after past, a minor trauma, we, we will see the, the digital branches of plantar foot. Uh, there, there is some swelling occurs at the nerve, which is called as Morton's neuroma. And Second way is the change in facial tension with function or repetitive muscle contraction about or under the opening in the fascia. As a result, opening may change from a round shape into a sharp edge buttle horn con configuration which then compresses the relative soft sensory nerve trunk. Uh, there are many studies are done uh, and uh, they have compared the nerve from one side of the body to the other side like if there is a L4-L5 uh, disc prolapse compressing the nerve there. root 
at the root so they have scanned whole the nerve and they compare with the other normal side and they found that uh, the, the that pathology is not only at the point of compression that whole nerve is inflamed and there are various structural changes found in the nerve and they have uh, taken a sample uh, from the nerve and they found there are many uh, neuro many inflammatory markers are there which is present the, uh, at the whole whole course of the nerve till the periphery so it is very important to notice that uh, to notice the, that we have to uh, cover the whole nerve of the patient just not the uh, compression site uh, or where the actual pathology is so the nerve uh, swells integrate and retrograde until it reaches the facial penetration point the facial penetration point is proposed to become a site for self perpetuating neuropraxia this is a chronic constriction injury it is a potentially a small step with additional trauma to reach an axonomesis state of small c fiber which is viewed as a potential pathologic state in complex regional pain syndrome type 1 so this is the diagram showing a cutaneous nerve at facial penetration point proximal there is a swelling and post swelling there is a small chronic constriction injury point is there so which should be addressed in the neurofacial uh, prolotherapy uh, now the uh, uh, about platelet rich plasma and its mechanism the usually the 5 to 6 times of concentration of the prp is used which is uh, as compared to blood at the site of injection releases platelet derived transforming fibroblast and vascular endothelial growth factors and during primary inflammatory phase of healing platelet functions involve addition aggregation clot retraction procoagulation cytokine signaling chemokine release growth factor release and antimicrobial effects activated platelets also secrete stromal cell derived from factor 1 alpha which supports primary additions and migration of mesenchymal stems or sto stromal cells helps recruit undifferentiated cells to the site of injury as well as enhance mesenchymal stem or stromal cell differentiation and proliferation and these are the growth factors which are released at the site of injection platelet derived growth factor which helps in collagen synthesis and protein synthesis vascular endothelial growth factor helps in vasculogenesis and angiogenesis and transforming growth factor which stimulates chondrocytes and cartilage growth and decrease the catabolic activity so what is the, uh, uh, so about it is about the timing of treatment which is very important when to start the treatment for uh, 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 pain management and uh, ideally a uh, 8 week delay after injury before prolotherapy treatment has tra traditionally been recommended to allow the body sti body time to self repair and patient who are unable to work who are in constant pain hampering the rest and who had previous chronic pain in the same area that was reactivated by minimal trauma or exceptions however the gentleness of neurofacial prolotherapy methods lower the threshold for its usage consideration in acute injuries and other special situations like pregnancy in pregnant patient it is very difficult to uh, position it for the like uh, if you want to do uh, spinal injections or so it is very difficult to keep it prone or if uh, and sometimes we can't use CM as well for such patient so in this patient neurofacial prolotherapy is an excellent option for pain management so before initiation of prolotherapy uh, discontinuation of all NSAIDs is preferable two days before treatment and 10 days subsequent to the treatment because NSAIDs will uh, by its anti-inflammatory effect can render uh, our prolotherapy uh, ineffectual however the mechanism of neurofacial prolotherapy may not be affected by NSAIDs use because neurogenic inflammation is not prostaglandin mediated so we can give NSAIDs while performing neurofacial prolotherapy and uh, intra-articular uh, prolotherapy performed every 4 to 12 weeks uh, the cycle can be repeated after every 4 or 4 to 12 weeks and neurofacial prolotherapy is used alone is best if used alone is best perform at 1 to 2 week intervals and generally 3 cycles are recommended minimum 3 cycles are re recommended for desired uh, effect and what are the solution and choices of solutions are there and, pre uh, and how they are prepared 
डेक्सट्रोज द आइडियल सॉल्यूशन रिकमेंडेड फॉर प्रोलोथेरेपी इज 12.5 परसेंट सॉल्यूशन एंड वी कैन इजीली गेट 50 परसेंट एंड 25 परसेंट डेक्सट्रोज इन आवर ओटी फिनॉल इज मोर इफ इफ इट इज इट इज यूज फॉर टुडे नाउ डेज इट इज यूज फॉर केमिकल न्यूरोलाइसिस बट परसेंटेज लेस देन थ्री परसेंट एंड आइडियल इज पॉइंट फाइव टू वन पॉइंट टू फाइव परसेंट कैन बी यूज एज अ प्रोलीफरेटिंग एजेंट इट एक्स बाय क्रिएटिंग इन्फ्लेमेशन बट नॉट मोर देन थ्री परसेंट सोडियम मोरवेट कम्स एज अ फाइव परसेंट सॉल्यूशन टू एम एल डायल्यूटेड इन टेन एम एल सीरीज मेक्स पॉइंट फाइव परसेंट टू वन परसेंट सॉल्यूशन फॉर इंजेक्शन एंड द हाउ द प्लेटलेट रिच प्लाज्मा इज प्रिपेयर द प्रिपेरेशन कंसिस्ट ऑफ ऑटोलॉगस ब्लड कलेक्शन प्लाज्मा सेपरेशन बाय सेंट्रीफ्यूज एंड एप्लीकेशन ऑफ प्लाज्मा रिच इन ग्रोथ प्लाज्मा रिच इन ग्रोथ फैक्टर्स इन अफेक्टेड एरिया हाई डेंसिटी प्लेटलेट रिच प्लाज्मा इज डिफाइंड एज द ऑटोलॉगस ब्लड विथ कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ प्लेटलेट एट इक्वल और ग्रेटर देन फोर टाइम्स ऑफ सर्कुलेटिंग बेसलाइन लेवल्स एन एवरेज पेशेंट प्लेटलेट काउंट इज टू पॉइंट फाइव लैख टू पॉइंट फाइव लैख प्लेटलेट्स पर डी एल एंड फोर टाइम ऑफ दिस इज वन मिलियन पर डी एल विच इज कंसिडर्ड द डिजायर्ड बेंच मार्क फॉर थेरेपेटिक पी आर पी सो दिस इज हाउ वी आर प्रिपेरिंग द पी आर पी वी कलेक्ट दिस दिस स्टेराइल ट्यूब्स विथ एंटी कोगुलेंट्स आर देयर इन फर्स्ट पिक्चर एंड एट पॉइंट फाइव एम एल इन एवरी ट्यूब इज कलेक्टेड विच इज सेंट्रीफ्यूज फॉर फोर थाउजेंड रोटेशन पर मिनिट फॉर फिफ्टीन मिनिट एंड वी कैन सी द सेपरेटेड प्लाज्मा फ्रॉम द आर बी सी आर बी सी इज सेटल डाउन एंड वी आर डिस्कार्डिंग द आर बी सी पार्ट एंड अपर वन थर्ड ऑफ द प्लाज्मा एंड रेस्ट वी आर कलेक्टेड एंड कलेक्टेड इन अ सेपरेट ट्यू ट्यूब्स विच आर अगेन सेंट्रीफ्यूज फॉर थर्टी थर्टी फाइव so we are getting that uh, some small uh, the third upper right upper peak uh, small rbc part and uh, this buffy coat is visible here and uh, we can uh, discard the rbc part and upper one third again and we will get ultimately we will get 3 to 5 ml of prp so can we treat with just one type of prolotherapy and expect to affect all nociceptive sources presence of pathology at several level of the posterior mi or at different branches branch level of peripheral nerves may suggest that the optimum approach is combination of several levels of prolotherapy now about prolozone it combines the principle of neuro neural therapy prolozone uh, prolotherapy and ozone therapy it involves injection injecting combinations of local anesthetic inflammatory drugs vitamin mineral proliferatives and ozone oxygen gas together and ozone was exerting its healing effect through the process of oxygen utilization and minerals and vitamins are used to uh, uh, work as a substrate for oxy oxygen utilization in damaged tissue which are often deficient in oxygen and the concentration of use for ozone is 7 to 10 ml of 15 to 30 mcg per ml and it act as a powerful oxidizing agent ozone has been found to be have a pro inflammatory as well as anti inflammatory effect typically given weekly for 3 to 12 cy treatment cycles and little about uh, vitamin d cream how it works uh, as we know that high do oral doses of oral calciol or colio calciferol resolve pain in patient with osteomalacia and reduce neuropathic pain in diabetes with low vitamin d status shown ability to improve the axonal regeneration after nerve injury and surprisingly fast and effective analgesia within 10 minute response for condition as varies varied as uh, acute shingles osteoarthritis finger and reflex sympathetic dystrophy has been noted empirically and clinical experience suggests the twice daily application is effective for most patient this colocalciferol is pro form of vitamin d an active form is usually have no effect on the uh, neuropathic pain conditions this is how i do it uh, this patient is uh, having a uh, back pain with multiple pain generators so with uh, uh, you have to summarize it now yes multiple pain generators so it is uh, we have applied the amla amla cream and all the bony points and tender points are uh, marked and which is infiltrated with the pro proliferating agents and this is for migraine there are uh, all the tender points and uh, bony attachment points are marked and they are injected with uh, uh, proliferant agent either dextrose or prp and they have noted excellent pain relief in headache and migraine patients this is for knee joint you you just mark the nerves and uh, injected the knee joint with the uh, prolifer pro proliferating agents 
this is for uh, our tendo achilles point and plantar fasciitis and these are the points for uh, our uh, uh, shoulder neck pain and headache and the second pick is for uh, crps we have to inject on posterior tibial nerve peroneal nerve on the course of the nerve for pain relief and i would like to share some two three cases clinical cases which i have done recently in past two to two to three months uh, this 58 year old male patient is having uh, severe radicular pain from neck back of the shoulder to the c6 dermatome and uh, on palpation i have noticed various tender point on the c6 nerve dermatome so i supplemented this patient with uh, ultrasound guided c6 nerve root block along with uh, multiple dextrose injection on the uh, tender point and patient is noted excellent pain relief after that this another case of uh, 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 crps this patient after a minor twisting injury suffering severe ankle pain since, since 20 years this patient uh, 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 we have done a nerve conduction study and there is a, a compound uh, muscle action, uh, reduced compound muscle action potential of the tibial and peroneal nerve uh, suggesting the axonal neuropathy so i have supplemented uh, i have done this uh, lumbar sympathectomy along with uh, dextrose prothrombotherapy of the affected nerve and patient is more than one month he is having excellent pain relief and the third patient is subtalar arthritis he is uh, injected with uh, uh, two cycles was done already after first cycle his pain is gone 100% and uh, the swelling subside by 50% in first cycle and second cycle the swelling subside by 80% and in our department we have conducted a, a study on 14 knee joint and 29 patients and we have injected prp three cycles were injected at an interval of 21 days and this is the comparison of the uh, uh, this is the study comparison uh, means the maximum benefit is lasted till 6 month and after that it again uh, pain is again reappears so it indicates that uh, uh, stiffness pain and uh, ex uh, functional mobility improves till 6 months and if we combine it with uh, RF or some other therapy then we may get a prolonged uh, pain relief uh, for the patient and this is the last uh, this we have conducted study on 32 patient on chronic plantar fasciitis and uh, uh, this uh, first cycle only first cycle was done for those patient and AOFAS and hind foot score at different time the more is the score the better is the outcome here and at 9 month 91% is the score uh, for the patients and uh, the Rolex and Model C score at 9 month they shows that more than 69% patient having good pain relief uh, after first cycle and this is the final result that our 90% of patient are pain free uh, plantar fasciitis patient are pain free till 9 month duration thank you Thank you, Sumit. Thank you so much. Uh, so this uh, addition to that, what you, Sumit has already mentioned about uh, uh, prolotherapy, just I would like to just summarize that. Uh, so prolotherapy is basically uh, we are creating the inflammation by injecting some uh, uh, proliferating agents, uh, mainly used for the degenerative conditions. Where we have degenerative conditions, we want to create uh, heal the tissue by creating the inflammation so that body has its own capacity of healing that inflammation. So we create a, like in osteoarthritis, we basically create not the normal cartilage, but it's a fibro cartilage. We are creating a fibro cartilage. So that fibro cartilage basically covers the nerve endings and it, uh, the pain goes down. So that is the basic idea of uh, prolotherapy. Uh, PRP is basically, again, the growth factors are there. So we inject uh, uh, plated rich plasma where we have already have inflammation. So on, on inflammatory conditions uh, like tendinitis, tendinosis, uh, enthesitis, all those conditions where we inject platelets and the platelets get attached to that inflammatory area and they start releasing the growth factors. Uh, and another addition to that is the diet growth factors. Now we have started taking out the growth factors from the platelets. So we have uh, activators available now and we uh, take out the growth factors specifically from the, from the uh, platelets and we inject those uh, growth factors directly in, at the site of the injury or the inflammatory areas. So all these procedures, basically, we don't do anything blind and uh, uh, ultrasound has become a, uh, has played a ma very major role in uh, regenerative interventions. And that is what I think uh, uh, 
um, uh, Madhur is going to speak on role of ultrasound in uh, rotator cuff injuries. Thank you, Sumit. Thank you. Uh, so I'll invite uh, uh, Madhur for his lecture on rotator cuff injury management, role of ultrasound uh, uh, in uh, muscus related ultrasound. Thank you so much, thank you, Sumit. Sir. And thank you, Dr. Anil. He's like a senior and a brother. So thank you so much for inviting me. So can I have everyone up over here so that it becomes interesting, you don't get bored and it's shoulder injuries. So yeah, come up, come up, come up, come up. I'm not going to bore you much. Boss, slide laga do. So basically, anesthetists will definitely get one day or other the neck, back and shoulder injuries or some kind of shoulder problem. So how many of you are suffering from some kind of shoulder rotator cuff pains? Great, sir. So I can see it's not going fully, totally. Some adhesive capsulitis and tendinosis already over there. So yeah, please change the slide. Yeah. Okay. So video, आप ही को चलाना पड़ेगा क्योंकि सारे वीडियो में जैसे आप कर रहे हो, okay. So we'll talk about some bursitis, tendinosis, tear, arthritis, adhesive capsulitis, and calcification. And so, so this is a blank slide. Just be blank because a uh, few things are new for you. Few things are different for you. So when we get shoulder, just remember interventions are not the mainstay. Interventions will help you break the cycle. The regenerative procedures may kind of take it back to an extent, but the main part is your rehabilitation and that too, you should understand how your scapulothoracic movements work. So simple exercises, if you have pain along the pectoralis, that means you have a tight shoulder. So just check it. Everyone should check it. Just check it along your pectoralis. Just open it up and check it. If you feel some pain, do you have some pain? No, good, nothing, no pains over here, no rotation movements and all that, that's good, everyone is perfectly fine then. So everyone is fit and fine. So if you get it, anything above 90 degree, any pectoral pain, just remember your shoulders are getting tight, you need to release them, okay? So before you start, warm it up and then start your procedures. So in ultrasound, this is how the biceps tendon looks. This is a normal biceps with a humeral artery over there, all right? So that is how it will look. I'm not going to in details of it. Next slide, please. And this is how a peritendon fluid accumulation and chronic biceps tendinosis looks. So this is an acute on chronic tendinosis. Please play, play. Pichala, pichala, usko play kar do. Last wale, haan, usko play karna play karna. Haan, yeah. So you can see that fluid accumulation. So it is a short axis view and then I'm taking a long axis view. So that's the biceps tendon and you have some peritendon fluid collection. So if you aspirate it, there'll be one or two ml which will be coming out. And every time people say, this is painful and this is coming down, this is radiating down towards my arm. It could be confused with a cervical radical prathi. So shoulder always look for neck, neck always look for shoulder. That's a combination you have to do. Next. So this is how a very simple good shoulder will look. Usually we don't get these kind of images, but this is a normal shoulder. That's a humeral head and that's the synovium. That's a subacromium, subdeltoid, bursa over here. The fluid which I'm showing. Usually you won't get the fluid. Sometimes it's a uh, mild uh, fluid collection is always there. And this is the deltoid muscle. And this is the supraspinatus. This is the footprint, the muscle belly. And usually most of the tears, they happen at the critical zone. Very rarely the intra-substance tear that happens with a lot of sports injuries or if you have abducted it too much. Okay, so usually you will get patients with these kind of tears. So this is how it looks. You go down, you go up. So, and these are the muscle septates in between. These are the muscle septates. So this is a good shoulder, a young shoulder, which is kind of good. All right, next. So now we have a person who had a tear. The same slide, a different person. So this is the tear over here and this is a retraction. Sorry, I couldn't blurt it up. Just uh, made the video recently. So we are just measuring. So the person has a supraspinatus tear. Thoda back chale Yeah, just pause. So this is the supraspinatus muscle which has got totally torn. So this is a complete full thickness tear. Reason, there are two elements. One is over here, one is over here, and there's a retraction. And that retraction is more than one centimeter plus. And there is a dumbbell-shaped curve. So if anyone will ask, do you go
go ahead with the regenerative procedure or any interventions over here. Yeah, if you want to go ahead with steroid shots, fair enough to decrease the pain. Regenerative procedures, no, not at all. You won't get the results. You, this is an arthroscopic patient. If not ready, then you can do some regenerative procedures in that. It will heal to an extent, but the pain will go away, but the injury won't because it's a retracted tear. So no amount of stem cells or any kind of regenerative procedures are going to help. So select your patients accordingly. Change. So this is just a tendinosis, the same supraspinatus, the needle is in and we are just peppering the tendon at the footprint to improve the blood circulation. Then inject whatever you want to, oil, steroid, local anesthetic, Coca-Cola, doesn't matter. <laughs> Something will work. Okay. So change over. So that, that's just the needle because you, you must be doing ultrasound. So when you do that, just kind of look into the shoulder. Shoulders are easy to look and very easy to do in that sense. A change, yeah. Play. Play, play, play. It's the end of the change. So this is, usually I prefer pay, positioning the patient in lateral deputies view. Easy because shoulders sometimes can get too painful. So place them in lateral position. Uh, sometimes you get a vagal syncope because it's all live procedures under local anesthesia. And just, again, we are doing some SCPs procedure, orthobiologics into the tendon and just peppering the tendon. So this lady, oh, sorry. Thoda sa play karta paas is mein, thoda sa. Aage, 2.2 tak ha. Thoda aur aage, bas thik hai, play karta. So over here, that's a footprint tear. My, uh, it's, it's not a full substance tear, it's a microarticular surface tear. So just go in, easily you can put it in, inject your stuff and then get them with rehabilitation. They will definitely improve. It takes time for the shoulders to improve, but they do. Next. So this is capsular dilatation. So as the gentleman over here said that he was not able to raise the arm completely to the 90 degrees, so that is adhesive capsulitis. And it's a kind of a mixed term because you get the capsule thickening. Along with that, you'll get some tendinosis. So these days, amount of volume hydrodilatation, you can do it with saline, you can do it with any other product, will definitely open up the capsule and then immediately start mobilizing the shoulder. It's just what the surgeons do in the OT to mobilize the shoulder. You either do it under general anesthesia or do hydrodilatation and then take, it, take them up for local manuals shoulder. So the adhesive capsulitis will open up to an extent and then go ahead with the physical therapy part. Next slide. So this is interesting. These days you keep on getting these calcifications because people are, uh, are getting more active. People are taking calcium supplements. So calcium is getting deposited somewhere else. So this is a calcium deposit along the footprint. And usually you get a lot of soft calcium deposits. Sometimes they're too hard, then it's a surgical maneuver to remove it. If they're soft, you can break them up to an extent, even 20% breakage, and then do your infiltration, okay. the improvements are going to come. Next. So this is how we are just doing a calcific breakage. You need a thicker needle, you can go with two needle technique, single needle technique, depends whatever suits you. Just go in, out, inside infiltrate, go in and out. It takes 10, 15 minutes and do some barotage techniques, a lot of volume hydrodilatation, but not too much. Otherwise, you are going to break the tendons. So 10 to 12 ml of fluid along with this is going to help. So that's me and the patient talking. So they're comfortable. So that's the calcific deposit, just taking the needle up, going in and out. So the view should always be in, in a long axis, it helps. Next slide. And finally, this is an AC joint, uh, capsular thickening with some degeneration. They are tough because no matter what you do, the degeneration is always going to make that click sound and the capsule will get decreased in size. The pains are going to come down, but the AC degenerations are not going to benefit. But with exercise and all that, it's going to help. So AC, go in plane, or out of plane. Easier to go in and help them out. So I'll finish all the videos over here. But next step with shoulder is once you get them done, always remember physical therapy in form of ultrasound, radiation, those things don't help. It has to be mobilized. And the mobilization will come from neck, the back, upper back, the rhomboids, the complete shoulder, and a lot of scapulothoracic movements, and a lot of pectoral diseases. So if the therapist understands what you're doing, the results are going to be fantastic, but it's going to take its own sweet time, at least two to three months. 
So shoulders, the client has to understand that it will take time, but you have to work hard on those things. That I'll finish, sir. Thank you so much. Any questions? Thank you, thank you Madhur. Uh, so as you rightly mentioned that uh, the selection of cases is very important. Uh, since we can do a lot of uh, millimeter interventions, so that doesn't mean that let's, let's go for a trial first. So that should not be the approach uh, with a pain physician. Uh, like most of them, physiotherapists, they do like this. Whenever patients go to them without understanding the pathophysiology or the basic pathology uh, inside, they just want to give some trial of physiotherapy, right? So that should not be our approach. We are doctors and we are the specialist doctors and now in the super specialty category. So we must identify the pathology and then act accordingly. So we have limitations with the less invasive interventions. So wherever the surgery is required, we must advise the uh, patients to go for the surgical interventions. Thank you, Madhur. Thank you so much. So definitely ultrasound has become a good tool for us uh, nowadays for the musculoskeletal uh, injuries and other interventions. Uh, our fluoroscopy has a big role in interventions for most of the spine interventions now since we do uh, high-end procedures like endoscopic discotomies and vertebroplasty, Anurag must have told about the vertebroplasties. So all these procedures do require uh, uh, fluoroscopy and uh, radiation safety is one of the major thing which we must uh, understand ki how we can protect ourselves and our staff and the patients from the radiation hazards. So over to uh, Preet uh, Kumar Nurula, he has been talking about the fluoroscopy, radiation safety and the techniques. Good evening everyone. Today we are discussing about fluoroscopy, radiation safety. It's the only basics. I will give just you an overview about the topic about the radiation safety that we should take care of. Now there are some few questions. You need not to answer this. You just keep the answer in your mind. We'll discuss this in later after finishing the lecture. What is Alara? As long as radiology acceptable, as long as radiology allowable, as low as reasonably allowable, as low as reasonably achievable. Now next question, maximum dose of radiation absorbed by the patient in lumbar spine fluoroscopy is in skin, abdomen, vertebra or spinal cord. Maximum dose of radiation absorbed by the physician in lumbar spine procedure is due to direct x-ray beam, reflected x-ray from the plate, reflected from the patients or beam that passed through the patients. Position of radiation source of the CM for AP view of the patient in prone position should be above the table, below the table, location does not matter or none of the above. Now, does anyone have an idea of who is she? She is Midori Naka. The date is very important, August 1945. You will have a fair idea about the incidents. She was a young dancer in Japan. She was performing and after perform her performance was over, she exited the hall and was waiting for the transport. Suddenly, she heard a big loud sound and felt an intense heat. She found that her clothes were stripped away and were melted. And that was the atomic bomb dropped at Hiroshima and Nagasaki. She died few days later. This is just an uh, this is just to give you an idea about the radiation hazard that we have to face. So we have to take care about the guidelines, safety guidelines. Now some basics about the fluoroscopy and radiation. Just suppose a patient is lying down on the X-ray table and X-ray beam is striking uh, to him his body. Then there will be certain terminology for those radiations. That is the absorbed dose. It is the amount of radiation absorbed by the tissue per mass of the tissue, and measured in gray. One gray is equal to one joule per kg. And when the X-ray beam strike at the area of the body, the skin of that area will receive the maximum dose, and that is called the peak skin dose. And as the X-ray beam pass through the body, there will be enter skin, uh, enter skin dose and the exit skin dose. The effective dose, it is the biological measure of the radiation, which can potentially cause harm, like the carcinogenic dose. It is measured in sievert, ram or milliram. Now, inverse care law, it is the correlation between the uh, distance between the X-ray so X-ray tube and the performer of the uh, procedure. So the strength of the X-ray beam is inversely proportional to the scale of distance from the source. If you are standing one feet away, then the radiation hazard will be less by the factor of one. But if you are standing two feet away, the it will be reduced by the factor of four. So at about six feet away, you are almost away from all the potential hazards of radiations. Now this is the CM, everybody has seen it, whether practicing pain or uh, anesthesia. And there are certain parts, it is the X-ray tube from which X-ray is generated. It is collected at the B, amazing intensifier, and transmitted at the display, display monitor. 
सी इज द कॉलीमीटर विच हेल्प्स इन फोकसिंग द रेज एंड रिड्यूस द डोज ऑफ रेडिएशन इट ऑल्सो हेल्प्स इन शार्पनिंग द इमेज द क्लोजर यू आर टू द पेशेंट मोर इज द एक्सपोजर फ्रॉम द बीम रिफ्लेक्टेड फ्रॉम द पेशेंट दिस इज एन पिक्चर टेकन फ्रॉम ए रेडियोलॉजिकल जर्नल फ्रॉम हेयर वी कैन सी दैट द एरिया विच इज क्लोजर टू द एक्सरे ट्यूब एंड एट द पेशेंट बिकॉज द स्कैटर्ड रेज फ्रॉम द पेशेंट्स बॉडी विल कम टू द डॉक्टर सो वी हैव टू स्टे अवे एंड फॉलो द इनवर्स केयर लॉ फॉर प्रोटेक्टिंग अवर सेल्फ्स दिस इज जस्ट टू गिव एन आइडिया अबाउट द रेडिएशन वी टेक इन पेन प्रैक्टिस सी रिमेंबर अबाउट दिस मैन मैक्सिमम एनुअल डोजर्स दिस इज द अफेक्टिव डोज दैट वी हैव डिस्कस अर्लियर दैट कैन कॉज हार्म and these are the individual radiation which we take for the individual procedure now many of these procedure are done under ultrasound but yes for kyphoplasty and spinal cord stimulator we have to take the help of fluoroscopy and that to for the long time so we should always take care about the effective dose and accumulated dose in our body now some certain basic principles of the fluoroscopy and radiation what is alara it is as low as reasonably reasonably achievable now what do you mean by reasonably achievable if you have to perform a procedure in real time then you have to do it but definitely you can reduce your exposure that is by reducing the time of the radiation then the increasing the distance from you uh, from the x-ray source and then the shielding like lead aprons thyroid shield and glasses or gloves now how can you minimize uh, your exposure what can you do outside the procedure room that is the education you should educate yourself and your staff for radiation safety and then every institute usually have the radiation safety officer who can guide us and ensure that the safety guidelines are followed properly you should up timely update your dosimeter which measure the accumulated dose in the body and yes fluoroscopy and other equipment should be maintained properly so that we should uh, there is no malfunctioning and the you should take 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 care of the lead apron this should not be twisted folded and throw away in the corner of the ot always hang these in the hangers provided for them what can you do during the procedure the main is the communication suppose you have a over enthusiastic technician who is shooting the x ray then you have a lot of radiation exposure so always communicate properly with the fixed terminology like cranial tilt caudal tilt and uh, or the oblique to the right of the patient oblique to the left of the patient if you will say right left up down then he will get confused then radiation will be uh, more uh, exposure will be more and avoid getting your hand in the frame uh, avoid continuous fluoro wherever possible avoid the magnification because with magnification there will be the increase in the dose of radiation and use collimation and certain points especially for the pain physician use protective equipments like lead apron thyroid shield glasses or gloves stand away from the x ray tube because it will have a more lot of x rays lot of radiations and if you are taking a ap view and pa patient in prone position then stand away or a tube tube should be on the below the table and if you are taking the lateral view then you should stand away from the x ray tube use ultrasound wherever possible and if you are a short heighted person while performing a procedure your eyes will come in contact with the radiation field so always use the stool to keep your eye away from the radiation field now certain points to prepare you for your clinical protect practice know your equipment you should have a thorough knowledge about the equipment before buying this select your cr this is the main machine which that is used in the pain practice so you should have a th you should do thorough search before buying the procedure Con consult few vendors or your colleagues who are using it don't leave this uh, uh, don't leave this decision on the management because sometime the cost over the quality will be an issue and you have to suffer afterwards yes financial consideration are definitely important so you have to select a budget and then try to get the best after that budget now prepare your site what do you mean by prepare your site suppose you have got the best cm out of the market but your ot doors are very small and you cannot wheel in this then that whole practice of buying the cm will be futile so you should plan properly before starting your practice and that's maintenance should be properly done for the every equipments certain consideration own practices versus institution practice if you have a own practice you are the boss but you have to do lot of hard work and research before buying the equipments and selecting the ot design and if you are in institute then just you have to coordinate with the responsible team and the workload on your will be less there are different considerations for government or private institution and you have to follow their guidelines thus radiation safety is the prime importance no matter in which type of practice you are working if you are single user then there will be no issue you can plan your case accordingly but there are multiple user then the everyone will be wanting the cm so you have to schedule your cases accordingly 
single procedure room then they, the cm will be in the same room so they, you need you need not to move this but if there are multiple rooms multiple ot's then the cm will be shifted from here to other ot from the corridor to the lifts then the maintenance will be an issue so you have to take care all these things now fluoroscopy and needling that is the main part where everyone is attracted towards the pain management to our body is 3d but the x ray shows the only 2d picture like here you can see that the only 2d picture is shown but in the ct picture there is the 3d but because there is an added element depth in the 3d picture when we see a body then there are different layers like skin muscle fascia and the bone in ultrasound we can appreciate all the layers separately like this but in the fluoroscopy we will see only the bones certain important points before starting any procedure you should have a thorough knowledge of the anatomy of that region where you are performing if you do not the anatomy no matter how skilled you are you will always end up in the needling the wrong position wrong anatomical region so now needle manipulation i will give you some tips and uh, you should have always correlate the body anatomy with the fluoroscopy anatomy so you can have a fair idea about in your mind about the 3d and perform the procedure successfully this is the needle which we use spinal needle quinky needle more in most of the pain procedure now the when you put the needle inside the body the tissue of the body will put a pressure on the bevel of the needle so when you go advance the needle inside the body the tip will move in the direction opposite to the bevel it will never go straight it will go opposite to the bevel and for lor that is a loss of resistance you have to train yourself in the initial years you can take some gauze piece and tape roll them and do the needling to have the feel of the lor and you should have a fair idea about the depth of the insertion as we know the spinal needle is about 10 cm and when you are inside the uh, tissue you should have a fair idea that how much is inside and how much is outside and do not move the needle when you are deep without checking for the depth of insertion so always take a lateral x ray to know the depth of the insertion because if you go keep going in ap view or the floor or oblique view then you will end up in a deeper structure and that can harm the body now the gun barrel view that is mainly used that is the end on view in this picture you can see that you can see only hub is visible because radiation x ray and the needle is in the same direction in this like direction of the x ray and needle is in the same direction so you will only see the tip of the needle that is the end on view now the certain points for the fluoroscopy you should have fair idea about the fluoroscopy anatomy this is the spinous process this is the pedicle these are the transverse process this is the lamina and this is the intralaminar space where we perform our spinal epidural procedure what is this any idea scotty dog or naughty dog actually this is scotty dog but it is very naughty because when we see attend any lecture or workshop we immediately we see that this is a scotty dog but when we go back and start practice this suddenly disappears and we have to struggle a lot to find this scotty dog like this is the fluoroscopy oblique view this is a scotty dog this is pedicle is the head this is the superior articular press this is the transverse process snout and this is the inferior articular process and spinal process is the hind leg and this is the entry of the transformal epidural injection that at the 6 o'clock position of 6 o'clock position of the pedicle now certain real time difficulty in the x rays when you take an ap view from the surface not me but when the x ray picture comes it is not the true ap because spinous process is not in the midline so you have to rotate your cm to get the actual true ap view to get in which the spinous process is in the midline but in certain difficult cases like in the spinal scoliosis or severe degenerative spine you can get the whole lumbar vertebra in a true ap view in a one x ray picture so you have to select the area of interest and do the true ap for that like in this picture l4 is in the true ap and l5 is slightly rotated and in this l4 is rotated but l5 is in the true ap view so you select the area of interest where you have to perform the procedure and get the true ap view for that area now so this is a difficult procedure like we do in the fluoroscopy for our spinal and epidural patient and believe me you start practice this uh, uh, spinal or epidural in the under fluoroscopy and you will have fair idea about the fluoroscopic anatomy and your transition to the chronic pain practice will be very easier this was a 65 year old lady 125 kg posted for bilateral tkr the spinous processes were not a palpable on palpation 
so we decided to go to perform the csc procedure combined spinal epidural under fluoroscopy first we took the true ap view now see this cm this is slightly rotated to get the true ap image of the spine and this is the area where we, we will go for the our spinal our epidural and and after selecting the area the toe is nearly going almost on the end on view and i will appreciate the uh, epidural space with the lor technique and uh, this is the lor technique i am appreciating for the epidural and after getting the lor appreciation the lor will take the lateral view to get the depth of the insertion for a csc procedure we have to perform the spinal under through needle through needle usually i avoid this lateral x-ray to avoid the radiation exposure because tapping of the csf will be the end point and we will be sure that we are in the space now this is the video for that procedure first we taking the true ap view for the spine then selecting the area of interest giving local at the entry point radiation safety is very important so we are, i have worn the thyroid shield and the lead apron this is the true ap view and no toes needle in the end on view with lor locating the epidural space now lor is appreciated and i am inside the epidural space taking the lateral view just to check the depth of insertion giving spinal needle through needle technique and csf is visible so i am at the accurate place giving spinal drug and then i will thread the epidural catheter and these are the procedure thoracic paravertebral rogue we used to do under fluoroscopy out 10 to 12 years ago but nowadays we are doing under ultrasound guidance initially we used to do for the landmark guidance then uh, uh, in difficult cases we used to take the help of the fluoroscopy i just give you the picture about this this is the ap view of the uh, trans uh, thoracic paravertebral block and this is the lateral view lateral x ray of the thoracic paravertebral block this was the uh, uh, case i did uh, for esophagectomy with the continuous paravertebral block and after to check the placement of the paravertebral catheter i put the methylene blue dye and checked it under vision in the during the surgery and this was a case of a multiple rib fracture he was a senior surgeon in my city his wife has an status and his son is a senior pain physician in us he was having excruciating pain i was called in the midnight so i performed the paravertebral continuous paravertebral block in the ear only and check the placement of the catheter after getting the x ray with the dye inside the body and you can see the beautiful spread in the paravertebral space and also interlacing in the intercostal space he had a great relief and his uh, uh, recovery was uneventful now the question we discuss what is alara as long as radiology acceptable as long as radiology allowable as low as reasonably allowable or as low as reasonably achievable uh, this is d the maximum dose of radiation absorbed by the patient in lumbar spine fluoroscopy is in skin the maximum dose of radiation absorbed by the patient by the physician in lumbar spine procedure is due to direct x ray beam reflected from the plate reflected x ray beam from the patients or beam passed through the patients it is a reflected x ray from the patients the position of radiation source of cm for the ap view of the patient in prone position should be above the table below the table location does not matter is the below the table now the take home message that is the tds minimum time for the exposure like minimum time of the x ray shoot maximum distance follow the inverse square law and use the protective equipment lead a lead apron thyroid shield and gloves and knowledge you should have thorough, thorough knowledge of the anatomy of the region where you are performing the procedure and communication is the key to avoid the unnecessary exposure of the radiations thank you uh, thank you preet so i think uh, with this we finished the session may i ask the faculties to come here please so that we can felicitate them uh, 
Thanks, Dr. Pankaj, for uh, accepting our request and coming here over for us. Uh, it has been a very long association with you, and we really feel proud to have you here. Thank you very much. Uh, may I request Dr. Hetal to felicitate uh, Dr. Pankaj, sir? Dr. Mukesh Abhani to felicitate Dr. Sumi. Dr. Nilesh to felicitate Dr. Madhu Chadda, please. Just a word about Dr. Madhu Chadda. I uh, suffered from the shoulder pain myself and uh, I went to him. Uh, besides that, he's a very eager academician and he has always supported the academics everywhere. Thank you. Uh, I request uh, Dr. Sinduja to felicitate Dr. Preet, please. With this, I think uh, we can conclude this uh, task on 22. Uh, with a very heavy heart, uh, the most uh, painful are always a good buy. Uh, we don't know exactly when something like COVID springs up again because everything was all right. Maybe uh, COVID was a message from the God to reconsider the human bonds, which we had lost somewhere in the race for money. I think we can always rethink, pause, analyze, and combine again for the welfare of all. Thanks, dear all, for making it successful. It was a real privilege. And three cheers for all, those who attended. Thank you. Hip hip. Hip hip. Hip hip. Shall see you again. Thank you. And a very warm goodbye. Thank you very much. Thank you.